Hey everyone, it's me and I'm back for another video. I decided to do one on Hoya Carnosa, which for those who don't know already, I am absolutely obsessed with all things Hoya. Um, so this is going to be a fun one for me. I can't wait to do it. First off, let's cover some um, of the Carnosa varieties since um, there's so many different ones. I actually only have a handful right here um, because, you know, I didn't really feel like I needed to collect all of the Carnosa varieties, uh, just this handful I have. So first we'll go back here and this is actually a Hoya Carnosa and the variety is often called Chelsea. It has these super cute, like, cup-shaped leaves. They almost remind me of, um, like, turtles. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's really interesting. This one actually can throw out some odd-shaped leaves, too, that look more carnosa um, versus the standard cupped leaves of the Chelsea. Um, right here I have a Carnosa Crinkle 8, which has eight little dimples down the leaves. You can kind of see those. And they, each leaf should have a set of dimples down the leaves. Um, right here we have a Hoya Carnosa Compacta, but it's a variegated variety. So this is actually I believe we called the Albo Marginata, um, and you can see it has that variegation on the outside. Um, this one also gets often called the Hindu rope plant. Um, and then next to it, I have, if you can see, my full-size Hoya Compacta, which is absolutely huge, and I just thought she had to be in a face pot because I named her Medusa. Um, and if you can see back here, she's actually getting ready to bloom in several different places. Here's another one she's getting ready to bloom. Um, and I believe I saw a couple more earlier. Um, I don't want to disturb it too much. Um, and then here in the back, I have the Hoya Carnosa um, it is an Alba Marginata. Um, this one often goes by Crimson Queen. You can see that it gets these cool pink leaves. And for whatever reason, my camera never wants to show off that pink color. And then next to it, I have the variety that they call the Crimson Princess or Variegata or Rubra. Um, Hoyas are interesting like that. There are a lot of different names for the same plants. So you can see this one, this variegation is on the inside versus the outside. And there's actually even some where the leaves are like all silver and there's some where the, um, you know, they're really splashy with the little silver freckles on them. There's a whole mess of different uh, Hoya Carnosa cultivars. The first thing I wanna cover with the uh, Hoya Carnosa is the potting medium. Um, I feel like that's actually the most important to pl place to start with Hoyas uh, because they are epiphytic plants that um, would naturally grow living on the side of trees. So I feel like covering the, the medium that you plant them in would be a pretty crucial place to start before going into light and watering and everything else because it all sort of follows after the potting medium. So here you can see I have a bowl that I filled with my potting mix. I didn't want to bring the whole large tote out. This is um, it's a mix of... A potting soil, high quality potty soil. I always start with something like Happy Frog or Earth Mother, and then I add in a lot of bark and pumice and other things to get it really um, 
quite gritty and very, very chunky. You can see it's probably more bark and pumice than actual soil in the mix. And um, as I said before, that's because Hoyas naturally live growing on the side of trees and wouldn't actually have any soil around their roots. So I feel like it's really important to start with a very, very chunky um, potting medium potting medium, so that the um, roots can really breathe well. Otherwise, the, the Hoyas have a tendency to decline and not um, thrive unless their roots can really breathe. I do need to add to that, though, that the Carnosa is actually a very easy variety to grow. It isn't as picky as some of the other ones. I just uh, like the consistency of sticking with this chunky medium in all of my Hoyas. That way I um, can you know, judge my care for each plant um, you know, with a, a baseline of the same potting mix. Okay, so now I want to cover light requirements for the Hoya Carnosa. Um, I'm actually gonna move over to where you can see one of my hanging plants. It's my solid green Carnosa. I actually have it hanging up in my window behind the Monstera that we already did a video on. You can see up there that I have it hanging right in a window. It has bloom um, blooms all over it. You can see the peduncles are um, getting ready to put out blooms in several places. That window, as I said in the Monstera video, faces um, mostly south with the windows in the rest of the room facing east, that one, and then the one that's way up there. So they do like a lot, a lot of light. I'm gonna go back to where the rest of them are sitting on my coffee table. Um, sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy on the camera. They uh, do like a lot of light to really get those blooms going. So I do recommend putting them in a place where you have at least morning light shining on the plants. They don't have to be directly in the window. Um, when you grow them in really high light, you can see, uh, when you grow them in really high light, you'll get some leaf bleaching uh, just from the sun. It's very common. It doesn't hurt the plant at all. It just, uh, it's just lightening of the leaves. You can see I even got some sun stress going on on this one where it's turning a little red. Um, like I said, it won't hurt anything. It's just uh, getting quite intense light. Uh, so if you don't like that lightning, you can pull them back from the window and that won't happen. Um, but I haven't had any trouble with my plants that way. So, um, minimum go with a near and east window. I've heard of people putting them fairly close to south windows as well. Be careful that you are on top of watering if you have them in a south window. Uh, I have actually burnt my leaves when I was uh, behind on watering one day. I didn't um, realize how dry the plant had gotten and managed to sunburn my leaves. So, uh yeah, be careful if you have them in a south or a west window where it gets really hot. The other thing you can do if you don't have ideal windows is Hoyas actually do very well in fluorescence and LED grow lights. So you can grow your plants on, um, on shelves with LED grow lights wired in and they will actually do very well. I have several that have flowered under um, nothing but grow lights. Next, I wanna cover watering. So when you are watering your carnosas, they actually can go through really dry spells and be just fine. Um, however, if you are using that really chunky mix, like what I use for mine, you will actually wanna water a little more frequently. I tend to not let mine dry all the way out just because the drainage is so well, like um, the soil drains so efficiently that um, they actually will need watering more frequently. The soil just gets out, or dries out super fast. So I think I average like once a week 
uh, in that mix, depending on how root bound the plants are um, for watering. And um, because the mix drains so well, I tend to hold the pots like over a bowl and just pour a lot of water through it so that um, that bark has a chance to soak up some of the water as it runs through the pots. Um, and so that's, that's about it for watering though. These guys are fairly not picky. I um, have heard that some people like to wait until the leaves are soft before watering. I don't like that method just because you're putting the plant in unnecessary stress by uh, depriving them of water for that long since they are a succulent leaf. Uh, so I actually like to just water, you know, right when it gets to the point of needing it without letting the plant get too thirsty. Now I want to cover fertilizing your Hoyas. Because they're blooming plants, they do want to be fed um, fairly often. They will need fertilizer. Uh, I really like orchid fertilizer for mine. My favorite being this Orchid Pro. Um, I actually water it fairly at a wheat concentrate. I don't usually use Orchid Pro all the time. Um, I usually use the Dynagrose Foliage Pro at a quarter strength and do that with every watering um, to just give them a constant low level fertilizer uh, being given to the plants all the time. I, I'm not a fan of miracle Grow, like for fertilizers. I've had a lot of problems with it burning them. However, I loved the Mr. Bottle for this and I had bought it um, a while back for my orchids before I knew better, uh, you know, that I didn't really like miracle Grow, And um, I've actually been mixing up, sorry, I just jarred the camera. I've been mixing up the this Orchid Pro here in, um, it has directions on the back for how to use it for foliar spray to spray it on the leaves. So I've actually been mixing it up for that and using it in this fine mist spray bottle. Um, so I'm not actually using the miracle Grow. I'm using the Orchid Pro. And I, after a watering, I'm misting the leaves with it uh, to help feed it through the leaves. Um, and that goes back to Hoyas in nature growing off the side of trees, uh, adapted to use their leaves to take in fertilizer, um, since their roots are more for anchoring them onto the trees versus uh, taking in nutrients from. Another thing I wanted to cover with Hoyas is they have a tendency to send out these long vines with nothing on them, as you can see. They, um, and sometimes they can be totally naked vines for, you know, weeks, months. I've even had one that was like leafless for, I swear, almost a year. Um, they are really weird in the sense that they'll send that vine out and just leave it there. And then they'll finally be ready to like, be like, oh, okay, I'm going to put some leaves on it. So if you see your Hoyas sending out these long there's another one on the queen. They'll send out their long naked vines. Um, I'm trying to find one on another plant. Oh, here you go. The Chelsea has this one that is like super long. Um, I believe my princess has some that are crazy long too that finally started to put out leaves. Here you go. There's that for you. Um, if it'll focus, they just kind of do their own thing. They'll send it, like I said, they'll send out, um, super long vines and then come back to that when they're ready to, to put leaves on them, uh, which is kind of interesting. I think I hear that question a lot, you know, oh my gosh, what's it doing? Did I do something wrong? It's not growing any leaves. Uh, but in reality, they're fine. They're just kind of doing their own thing. Um, Another question I hear a lot is, when will my Hoya grow? They are notorious for driving people absolutely crazy with not wanting to put any growth out. Uh, take this one, for example. I think I've had this plant for about a year and a half, and it's 
not very much bigger than when I got it. It has a handful of additional leaves, um, but this is not very much bigger. Uh, this one I've had for about a year, and I think it's only grown like two inches or something. Given me like four leaves. Um, this one did almost nothing for a whole year, and then it finally grew for me. And just sat there doing nothing, like content to be what it was. Um, and then last year it finally sent out a bunch of new growth. Uh, same thing with this uh, Crimson Queen back here. She did absolutely nothing for like six months to a year. And it just finally started giving me new growth this year. So um, Hoyas kind of operate on their own timetable. Uh, you know, they... Especially um, after a repot, if you repot a Hoya, they tend to not want to put out any new growth until they start to feel um, like they're restricted in their pots. When their roots start touching the edges of the pots, that's when they'll start um, giving you some new growth. So, uh, word of caution, if you pot them into too large of a pot too quickly, you won't see any growth up top for a while because they're working on their roots down below. Um... You know, and then they also just go through pauses where they'll just completely stop doing anything so that, uh, you know, who knows why, just, they just stop growing and then eventually you'll just come back and be like, oh, what the heck, like with all this new growth. So, uh, yeah, Hoyas are definitely interesting, incredibly frustrating, but incredibly rewarding when they do grow. I want to touch back on fertilizer before I end the video. Um, make sure you're not using the Orchid Pro and the Foliage Pro at the same time. I like to do uh, just the Foliage Pro and switch it up by uh, watering once in a while with the Orchid Pro. Um, since I've been misting the Hoyas with the Orchid Pro follularly, um, I haven't necessarily been fertilizing with every watering. Um, I don't think it would hurt anything, but uh, it could. Um, so just be cautious. Make sure you're fertilizing at very low levels. And I don't think you would have any problems with using the Foliage Pro with watering and the, the mist um, on the leaves. Uh, but, you know... Just be cautious if you see any um, leaf burning, you'll, you'll want to stop and flush the pot right away. Thank you guys for watching my video on Hoya Carnosas and um, all of the different varieties. Uh, I appreciate you taking time to check it out. Uh, if you could, please like and subscribe uh, so that you're notified when I put out the next video. And um, until next time, happy planting!